The iPhone XR has been a favorite here on the channel for many years, and I actually called this the best iPhone to buy in 2020. But as the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. And unfortunately, I think the end is here for the iPhone XR. You can buy an iPhone XR for less than $200 now? I was just about to make this video on why you should not buy the iPhone XR in 2023, but now, after reading that text message, I think that I need to dig a little bit deeper. So yes, I normally wait to talk about the pricing, but this video would not make sense if I didn't bring it up right away. Because right now, you can buy the iPhone XR for under $200 on eBay for the 128 gigabyte model in great condition. And if that seems too good to be true, it kind of is. So don't go buying one until you hear me out in this video. So right off the bat, the 2018 iPhone XR is and always will be a budget friendly iPhone. So the build quality and the display are going to reflect that. So we have the aluminum chassis holding in the 6.1 inch LCD display with those big thick bezels. And those bezels really stood out to me after using newer iPhones for so long with much less bezel around the screen. But regardless of having an LCD display, you know, I've said this a thousand times, this is the best LCD display you can get on an iPhone or any phone, in my opinion. It's Apple's Liquid Retina HD display, and it has a resolution of 1792 by 828 and a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. And along with that, you get 625 nits of peak brightness, which is the same level as the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 12. But using it out here, you know, I'm just getting a lot of reflections. When I'm around all these trees and everything, I'm just getting a lot of reflections, and I'm kind of squinting my eyes a lot when I'm trying to see what's on the screen. So not the greatest, especially coming from an OLED phone on the iPhone 14. I'm just used to being able to see everything great outdoors. It's just not the best here. However, when I was indoors, I did thoroughly enjoy everything. Watching videos, browsing TikTok, everything was perfectly fine when I was indoors and not under direct sunlight or not under a direct light where I got a lot of reflections on the screen. But still, at the end of the day, this is an LCD display and it's not going to be comparable to an OLED display. The OLED display is always going to be better. So if you're trying to decide between LCD or OLED, I would go with the OLED phones, especially now that they're more affordable than they were back then. I'm looking at you, iPhone 12. But as far as the exterior design, I think it's better than the iPhone 11 or the iPhone 12. It's just so clean looking with that simple single camera design. And you also get six color options to get one that matches your aesthetic. I chose red and it's still one of my favorite shades. Although if I had to choose again, I would probably go with the coral color because it's a bit more unique and rare and it just looks really good in person. But having this phone out in public, nobody's really gonna know that this is a five-year-old phone unless they saw the camera on the back. But even then they wouldn't think it's a five-year-old phone phone and that's because you know the lack of the home button on the front makes it look more modern and speaking of that clean design let's talk a little bit more about that solo camera on the back it's a single firing 12 megapixel lens and since we only have one lens that means you don't get the 0.5x option or the 2x option to zoom in or zoom out you're just stuck at 1x so if you want to digitally zoom into something you know, while taking a photo or video, prepare for the quality to be, let's just say less than ideal. I noticed a lot of grain every time I zoomed in. We're also missing night mode, deep fusion, HDR video, and quick take video, all of which I actually use regularly on the later generation iPhones. So that was kind of disappointing to go back to, especially not having night mode or deep fusion. This was, however, Apple's first foray into post image processing in the form of smart HDR. And it made a huge difference at the time and even today, I mean, the photos and videos taken from this phone are not bad at all when you get it in good lighting conditions. It's just when those lighting conditions are not the greatest or when that object isn't close enough that you need to zoom in a little bit, that's where you start to see the age of the camera system on this phone. At the end of the day, the iPhone XR is just a basic bare bones camera. And there's nothing wrong with that, especially given the price, but it's nothing more than just a bare bones camera given the current landscape in smartphone cameras. So now we have to talk about battery life and you know i'm at 94 percent battery health on my 10r which i think is tremendous i mean most people have under 90 percent after this long and i've been using this every single day since it launched maybe not as my main device but it's always been on i've always been using it pretty much every single day as a secondary device so 94 percent is quite impressive but if you're under 80 percent or if you're near 80 percent you could always replace your battery for i think it's 89 bucks from apple or you can do it for 40 dollars yourself via iFixit. But in terms of usage here in 2023, it's honestly not as bad as 
as I thought it would be. You know, I get around five, five and a half hours of screen on time when doing basic things like web browsing, watching YouTube, scrolling on TikTok, and just messaging. But the battery does take a big hit when I start gaming and using the camera a lot, especially in applications like Snapchat and Instagram, like third-party apps using that camera. That's when I start to notice a more dramatic decrease in battery life. And when I anticipate that big hit to battery life coming on, I make sure to charge up my iPhone XR or any iPhone with Ugreen's Nexo chargers. And they just so happen to be sponsoring this segment of the video. So this one right here is the 45 watt mini charger. So it has two USB-C ports on the front and it charges up at 45 watts. No 30 watt slow charging around here. And if you wanna charge up your MacBook, your iPad, or something that takes a little bit more power, they also have a 100 watt charger, which is the one I've used the most for the past like year or so. You can plug in four devices at once and get that blazing fast 100 watt speed. So my iPhone 14 will charge up way faster than the Apple charger that comes in the box. And I don't need that super bulky block to charge up my MacBook Pro efficiently. And these chargers are not just practical and aesthetically pleasing, they're also safe. Ugreen's power dispenser system intelligently adjusts the power output to protect your battery and ensures no overheating is going on with the charger or with your device. So if you wanna pick up one of these Ugreen chargers or one of their awesome braided cables, click the link in the description below to grab one today. Inside is the A12 Bionic chip, which was not only the first chip to bring Smart HDR to the iPhone, but it's also nearly just as powerful as the two succeeding iPhones. So it has the same amount of CPU and GPU cores as both the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 12. Now those two phones are slightly more powerful than the iPhone 10R, but honestly when comparing the three phones, I really was not able to tell a massive difference in really any category that I tested them in. We do have three gigabytes of RAM, so multitasking is not going to be the greatest. You will have to constantly relaunch applications when going out and back into them. It was frustrating at times, especially in games. You know, I would have to restart the game because I couldn't go to Twitter and tweet something and come back to the game without it relaunching. So it did get quite annoying after a while and definitely not something I could see myself using on a constant basis since I'm kind of all over the place. I'm always going into different applications at the same time, but that is something I did want to point out. But like I always say, if you just need a phone for your basic tasks, like most people probably do, you know, where you're just on social media, you're messaging, you're maybe using Snapchat, Instagram, the iPhone XR is going to be perfectly fine. Just don't put too much strain on the CPU or GPU on this phone. Like don't do, you know, hour long gaming sessions if you're not hooked up to a charger. Don't, you know, consistently be posting on Snapchat or Instagram stories, that's going to drain your battery and it's also going to lead to more lag. I should also mention that Face ID was not as bad as I was expecting given the 8-core neural engine, which is compared to the 16-core on the iPhone 12 and up. So it did take a little bit longer to scan my face and it wasn't as accurate, I would say, but it never drove me crazy. So I call that a win for the iPhone XR. We also cannot talk about the iPhone XR in 2023 without talking about its life expectancy in terms of software support. And unfortunately, the iPhone XR has a limited future. I would say maybe one to two, maybe even three more years of software support is left in the tank for the iPhone XR. I think it could very well be the oldest device supported by the time iOS 18 gets released in a couple of years. But if you're only needing a phone to get you by for the next couple of years and you have a $200 budget, I don't think you can go wrong with the iPhone XR. As a matter of fact, I think this is the best phone you can buy right now under $200 out of any other phone out there on the market, iPhone or not. But if you have a slightly larger budget, you might want to consider going to the iPhone 12. I did just recently make a video on that, and I would say this is the ideal option for those with a budget of $350 to $400. But if you're in the middle, consider the iPhone XS or the iPhone 11, both of which you can pick up for around $250 to $300. Now, if you have an iPhone XR right now in 2023, what should you do? Well, in my opinion, I think this is finally the year to upgrade your beloved iPhone XR. And while you could go for the iPhone 12 for like $220 more after you sell your iPhone XR, I think honestly, if you want the best ROI, the best return on your investment, you should go all the way up to the iPhone 14 or 14 plus. That's where I think you will see the biggest difference in terms of everything, performance, battery life, display, everything. I think you should go up to the iPhone 14 or 14 plus. Maybe wait until the iPhone 15 gets announced later this year, and then you can find the iPhone 14 for $100 less. Plus you'll see a lot of people selling their iPhone 14 or 14 plus on the used market for much less because they're just trying to get some money so they can get the iPhone 15. But all in all, the iPhone 10R would be one of the best phones to buy in 2023 if it were not for the limited future ahead in terms of software support and the now mediocre battery life that you get from this phone. And that 
that, unfortunately, is the sad truth about the iPhone XR in 2023. It will one day soon die, just like the iPhone 7 did with iOS 16. And that's gonna be a sad day because I loved the iPhone XR. I will probably always love the iPhone XR. So if you have an iPhone XR in 2023, or if you plan on getting one this year, let me know your thoughts down there in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you disagree with everything I said? I'm curious to see what you have to say. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll probably also enjoy this one right here. So go ahead and click on that link right there and check that out. But anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.